A dog, we are told, can live for as long as 10 to 15 years. And while most owners calculate the price of food and maybe the first vaccination, it doesn't end there. And pet ownership is considerably more costly than many people think. You can send us your own observations and experiences with the text line 51551. But here with some advice on the costs um, that you should consider before bringing the dog into your home, consumer columnist with independent news and media, Sinead Ryan. Sinead, I was looking at some of the notes for this earlier <laughs> and the eyes were nearly out on sticks. It ain't cheap. It's like having an extra child in the family, Sean. There's no, no doubt it. about it. It is Except really, you don't really books, expensive. Anyway. <laughs> exactly. Um, but uh, no, it's very, very dear and, and, you know, it shouldn't be undertaken lightly. And I know a lot of the charities that look after dogs, strays and abandoned dogs, you know, I always point out the dog isn't just for Christmas, but in fact, it's not just for summer. A lot of the charities like Dogs Trust are reporting that dogs are getting left and abandoned consciously at their doors because people don't want to pay the kenneling fees when they go on holidays. Yeah, so. we'll come back to that in a few minutes, but two and a half thousand euro a year for Around a dog. that. So, I mean, you could run a car for that, you know, um, and certainly depending on the type of dog and the new, the new regulations that are in place uh, regarding the chipping, the registration, the licensing, all that kind of stuff, which, which firmed up to a large extent last summer, which make all this stuff mandatory, is, um, it does bring up the cost. Yeah, but I mean, okay, where, so where does the two and a half thousand roughly, where does it go? I mean, in, in annual costs. Okay, well, I mean, there's a lot of costs. Uh, there, there's a couple of costs that are one off. Okay, so obviously, if you're going to purchase a dog, whether it's a purebred, and I, you know, I, I've had both, I've had mongrels, I've had purebreds, I would never ever go for, for a thoroughbred, a, a purebred dog, unless you're, you're, planning to show them or, or you're in that business they're incredibly expensive and they usually have greater health problems than say your your standard mongrel who will be a great family pet and um, so it's cost to purchase whether it's from a, a rehoming society so a lot of them will will give you maybe the dog for for a, a lot less like maybe 100 euros but include chipping and and vaccinations and all that kind of thing so there's a once-off cost to purchase the dog spaying or neutering your animal um, and, uh, and and getting it microchipped, although they should all come microchipped now. That's the law, right? But the ongoing costs are where the real money is. And it's not just the food, as you said. That's what most people think. We'll get them a nice bed. We'll buy them some food, throw in a couple of tin, tins of dog food into the oh, shopping yeah, every week. And that's it. Yeah, and it's not just that. Because, I mean, you know, every single year you're going to need annual vaccinations. You're going to need vet visits. You're going Like, the stuff happens to animals. They get, you know, they get the kind of thorns in their foot and they need their nails clipped and grooming and all that kind of thing. So the annual vaccination, 30, 35 euros. Um, but, but the kenneling, if you're going away at all for the weekend, I mean, whatever about leaving a cat for a couple of days to come in and out of the cat flap? And they're very kind of self-contained animals. Dogs are not the same. They're going to have to be minded and somebody's going to have to do that. And the kenneling, I rang around quite a number of kennels to see what was out there, you know. So you're pay, paying anything from about 12 or 13 to 25 euros per day that you're away. So you go away maybe for a couple of days at Easter, two-week summer holiday, you know, maybe you're visiting relatives over Christmas. <laughs> Not too long since an adult could get B and B. A B and B. Well, for, that's what for twenty five quid. And that's exactly what you're looking for. And some of them shone out of this world, like four poster beds and all kinds of nonsense. But anyway, um, but but the kennels won't take the animal unless they have had their flea treatments, their worm treatments, and their kennel cough vaccination, which is the really biggie. Now, all in all, that's going to be hundred and fifty quid right there. You know, right. without the kenneling costs. Yes, and so, they, they need assurances and presumably and you have certificates. to And certificates, exactly, to, this, to right. show that. So, you know, and then you have insurance for animals. Now, a lot of the insurance companies who are covering things like vet bills and operations won't take the animal over about seven or eight anyway. Uh, and depending on the type of breed, your insurance policy um, can cost maybe up to 200 quid a year. Uh, you've got the dog licence, which is being policed quite heavily now. Uh, it's 20 euros a year. Uh, or you can buy a lifetime licence. You have to go down to the post office to do that. Uh, and and all the other bits and bobs like collars and leads and toys and treats and I mean it really does oh, But they're not up. occurring costs I mean collars or are they collars Well they and are because they recommend that the bed is changed every year to 18 months okay so that's what, that's what vets would normally recommend because they do get especially for a long haired dog they get you know they get dirty and, and then, smelly Well, can, can, you groom, can you not do DIY grooming? Or it depends on the breed and mm. like a lot, lot of the little short hair terriers I'm told that that are fine they don't they need minimal groomings so you're looking at washing and cleaning but I mean a lot anything that's longer than that spaniels or any anything that's kind of longer hair you do have to get them professionally groomed their hair can get as I know from my own cavalier matted and and you know very very badly they roll around in leaves and mud mm. and all kinds of things so no I, I would always go for the professional grooming it's well worth it it's like, it's like cutting your own hair Sean now you don't <laughs> tell me you're going to do that <laughs> no I'm not um, now but, but what about the basic stuff food 
Yeah, so... Like, I mean, look, like, <sighs> presumably if to, most people will buy a few tins of dog food, or do they, again, depending on the dog, the size of the dog, it they'll depends, eat less or more? It does. It depends both on the size of the dog and also the quality of the food you want. I mean, in the same way that for, for human uh, humans, you can go in and buy just, you know, frozen food items and shovel treats into kids. But, but if you actually want good quality diet for a healthy, happy dog, you're going to have to pay more for that. And that means decent brands. It doesn't mean you have to go over the top with it, but you do have to supply good um, quality food and your dog will remain healthier as a result. Yeah, so I see Fergal Quinn writing in the Irish Times yeah. today saying, do you know what's in your frozen burger? Do you know what's yeah. in your tin of dog food? Yeah, and I mean, if a dog is going to be a member of the family, you know, and you want to treat it as a member of the family you want it to be as healthy and happy as possible there's no point in buying rubbishy cheap dog food for the dog's life and then wondering why it does it why it's ill or it needs to go to the vet more often or it's you know it's sick so good quality food 250 a, a, a year for the short the small little tiny breeds up to seven or eight hundred euros a year sean for the for the larger breeds and i suppose if you were keeping a greyhound it'd be even more you'd be throwing eggs and steak into it <laughs> you hope to get it back in <laughs> Harris Cross or Shelburne Park one of these places a word about the greyhounds because this is a big thing i was talking to uh, you know a lot of these animal charities that look after them and they were saying that greyhounds form the the bulk of the abandoned dogs that are left and other really? they, they were old racing dogs they're no good anymore and um, their owners don't want them they take the cut the chip out of their ear you know the racing chip uh, and and they're abandoned and they take in more greyhounds per breed than any other breed so and oh, greyhounds sorry. actually make very very good pets because they only need uh, although you consider them very large they're not a bad animal to have even in a small house because they need one burst of activity every single day and then they loll around for the yeah, rest yeah and, and a lot of people are making a similar point to you uh, Sheila for instance in Rohini in Dublin says um, forget the cost you could not spend the money on anything better they give back more than you'll ever spend on them so I, I would I would actually I would absolutely go with that I've I've um, my, my little Cavi died a couple of years ago Ruby and I have to say for the years that she was with us she gave us more joy and you can't quantify that so you you know but it's not a thing to be undertaken lightly and if, you're, if your kids are hounding you for a pet do consider all the options before you go and take that plunge. Yes, and um, as you say, it's not just at Christmas that it's at holiday time as much that the, uh, for instance, the Dublin uh, SPCA, uh, Society for Prevention of Cruelty to Animals, has dogs left at their door because people don't want to pay the kenneling fees and they don't want to go off on their holidays. But what's this stuck with pup scheme uh, that you wanted to talk um, about? Yes, the DSPCA runs, a, this is their latest kind of campaign called Stuck With Pups. Um, a, a lot of people, of course, who don't spay or neuter their animals end up with unwanted pups and and they can be en end up as we know being being kind of drowned and left at the roadside and left at, at these charities so they will take them in free of charge if you can't manage it uh, but the quid pro quo the, the uh, corollary is you must get the dog neutered at the same time uh, which they will also do for free now the neutering um, normally would cost about a hundred or to, to 400 euros depending on the on the breed okay so it's they so so you they'll know, take them in well, this one and then you're warned in, the and then you're warned there you go you can't have them again yeah Here's another one. I agree, says um, John Comer in Dunmore in County Galway. I agree dogs are costly. My eight-year-old mixed breed has developed diabetes. Insulin costs over €50 euro a month. Glucose monitor plus strips €84 euro, uh, plus monthly strips €54. Euro. Yeah. Special food €29 euro per month. Vet fees over €800 euro so far this year. It Not is. to mention vaccination, microchip, dog licence. But, says Joan, still worth still it. Still worth it. Well, you see, I, I, I'm in that was in the similar position because once the dog goes over eight or nine the insurance company won't cover that so when they get really really expensive you'll find you can't get the payback on it um, my my little cavy I was spending the bones of about 200 quid a month between eye drops and medication uh, at a time when really the logical thing would have been to put her down but look that's a hard conversation yeah, well, to have I'm trying to do the quick sums here yeah f um, uh, 50 euro per month for insulin glucose monitor plus strips that's 84 that's uh, about 134 mm. strips um, monthly strips 54 euro so you so know that's you're a couple of thousand a year without buying a, a tin of and the special food yeah it takes her over mm. the 200 mm. but and she says look it's worth it 
Well, this is it. I mean, we we would never have these conversations about our kids. You just do whatever you have to do. And if you're going to have an animal in the family and everybody loves it, uh, then you you share out the work and uh, and you're and your last quick of word of advice if you do want to go and uh, have them in a kennel while you're away. If you do ha- want them to go and have a kennel, go and inspect it. Most of the kennels now are very very well run. There are a few rogue operators out there. Word of mouth or your vet giving you a recommendation is definitely the best option. Plenty of land, fresh air, good food. Some of them have a dog walking service. Um, is the bedding clean and fresh? And are the dogs happy? Wagging tails. Very, very simple test that you can do. Dogs will tell you if they're unhappy. <laughs> Sinead, thank you very much indeed. <laughs> uh, it's uh, wonderful to have you in studio. And we will be talking about Roger Casement. Sinead Ryan, thank you. We'll be talking about Roger Casement on the centenary of his execution after this break. Today with Sean O'Rourke on RTE Radio 1.